over the next few hours here. So please remember to travel safely within the next couple of hours. It's 12 degrees right now. Winds relatively calm for the time being. However, winds will begin the shift back to the south during the afternoon. That's going to help boost temperatures back up into the mid to upper 30s later in the day. We're even talking about the 50s and yes, even the 60s in the forecast. A roller coaster of temperatures headed our way over the next seven days. So we head in the 50s for tomorrow. But cooler temperatures remain just beyond that by this week. And the 30s will be making a return to the viewing area. I'll let you know when temperatures will inevitably warm back up. Coming with my full forecast here in a couple minutes. Cameron, thank you. A quick traffic note to mention today. Uh, one lane in the southbound lane of I-65 is closed near mile marker 180. That's by the Brookston exit due to um, two semis colliding. Uh, there have been no injuries reported. We'll continue to monitor that throughout the morning. But as we just heard Cameron say, a warm-up is on the way and it will melt the snow that's on the ground right now. But you should, you should still be careful this morning as you head out. Overnight freezing temperatures have formed slick spots and black ice on the roads. And Benton County crews had trouble plowing due to the soft pavement. Highway officials say melting snow softened the pavement. They say it will cause more damage to the roads and their equipment. Highway officials say they do not plan on plowing county roads unless there is an emergency. In West Lafayette this morning, clearing roads is putting the street department over budget. The street commissioner Dave Downey says the last several months of winter weather has doubled the budget from last year. The biggest costs are salt, replacing snow plow blades and employee overtime. Mayor John Dennis says the money saved from the last few mild winters was put into a rainy day fund. He plans to use that money to make up the budget difference. We're going to be coming in front of our council probably in April and asking for an additional appropriation from our rainy day fund to compensate for the overtime expenditures for this winter season. Downey says despite this year's budget problems, he won't be adding any additional money to next year's budget. He says the department usually has about 32 inches of snow in the budget, but this year the city has seen almost twice that. And so travel restrictions remain this morning for the northern half of the News 18 viewing area. Jasper, Pulaski, and White counties are currently under travel watches. That means only essential travel, such as to and from work or in emergencies, is recommended. Travel advisories are in effect for Benton, Cass, and Newton counties this morning. That's the lowest level of restriction, meaning routine travel is allowed, but may be restricted in some areas. The Lafayette Police Department will discipline the officer responsible for a weekend crash with the Tippecanoe Sheriff's Deputy. A board of Officer Ian O'Shields' superiors recommended disciplinary action to Police Chief Patrick Flannelly. Flannelly gave his approval but would not reveal what the discipline will be. He says O'Shields takes full responsibility for the crash which happened after he ran a red light. Flannelly says he will review the findings and see what can be learned from the incident. We constantly look for ways to improve the setup in our cars, uh, our training regimen for officers in the future if there's, if there's lessons learned that we can take. The investigation is now complete. Combined, the damage to the two cars is estimated between $10,000 and $25,000. A bank robbery is under investigation in Montgomery County. The Sheriff's Office says it happened around 1:15 Wednesday afternoon at the Fountain Trust Bank in Darlington. Investigators say a man went into the bank, showed a handgun, and got away with an unknown amount of cash. According to detectives, they are searching for a white male around six feet tall and weighs 180 to 200 pounds. He was last seen on Main Street west of the bank in a dark colored vehicle. A Monticello man is arrested after a drug investigation that started last summer. 63 year old Donald Morris was arrested Monday afternoon for dealing in methamphetamine. Bond has been set at $50,000. He remains in the White County Jail this morning. The drug investigation continues and Sheriff Pat Schaefer expects additional arrests will be made. Months after an area library board was found to have violated the state's open door law, another complaint has been filed against it. A formal complaint against the Otterburn Library Board board was filed last month. The complaint alleges the board and its trustees properly voted to service to a service agreement with Medina Township at its meeting last month. Then when the trustee contacted board treasurer Donna Cox to change the agreement, she did so without a public meeting or a vote. The complaint also alleges that Cox spoke with four other members who agreed with her actions, but not in a public meeting. A response from the public access counselor is due March 24th. 
Purdue Aviation Technology students are learning how to fly and operate unmanned aerial vehicles, better known as drones. Video journalist Nate Shute shows us what's required to keep the technology in flight. We're playing with essentially what are small toys in here, but uh, that doesn't mean that that's what it's limited to. Struggled with how to start this class for a long time. I've been operating UAVs for about 10 years. I wanted to introduce that to the students. I wanted to share with them what I was doing. I couldn't find a way to do it safely and legally. And what happened was the technology developed to the point where I could fly indoors and replicate what was happening outdoors very accurately. This is model aircraft, but the same principles that apply to full-scale aircraft a lot of times will carry over to model aircraft. The actual difficulty of this is in the details of and of the flight autonomously and also the t attention to detail. Uh, the big difference is when you take the step to autonomous flight, which is automatic autopilot guided flight. It uses a GPS to locate its position on the earth, it uses a stabilization system to actually fly the airplane. So we start out with uh, simulators where they, uh, much, much like a model airplane simulator, we progress to uh, actual manual flight of quad rotors and helicopters. And then at that point, we introduce uh, video and still photos and what, a concept that we call FPV, which is first person viewer flight. The thing that you've seen us flying around here today was that AR drone, uh, which uses an iPad, which is kind of strange, honestly, from somebody who's used to using a, a more manual transmitter. I was using the camera, which is giving me live feed at the time, uh, looking down at that, and basically I can control it through both tilting and directions, and then there's some finger inputs you can use to get it to rotate axially around. In 2015, next year, the FAA is going to issue guidelines for civilian operations of unmanned aircraft for commercial purposes. And we need to be in that position to have, uh, have students that understand from all the way from simulators all the way to working with autopilots and ground stations and, and uh, actually implementing this technology. We'll become a more widespread thing because so many people find flight fascinating. I mean, honestly, people have always been interested in flight. This is the first year for the drone program at Purdue. And now, your Precision 18 forecast. News 18, weather from where you live. Well, that same area of low pressure that provides with all the rainfall, the sleet, the freezing rain, and eventually that snow yesterday morning has now passed off to the east of us. And all that precipitation is really being supplied to the northeastern United States here at home. A much different story from yesterday morning. Looking at clear, cool conditions. Temperatures as of right now sitting right around the mid to low teens, right around 12 in West Lafayette. Check out those winds from the west, three miles per hour, dropping the wind chills into the single digits. Those winds are beginning to shift back to to the south have been primarily from the north over the last 24 hours, keeping temperatures on a constant uh, or nose dive over the last 24 hours or so. But with winds now shifting back to the south, we're talking about slightly warmer temperatures later this afternoon. As of right now, it's 11 in Fowler, 14 in Rensselaer, as warm as 17 degrees in Crawfordsville this morning, 15 in Rossville, stepping out the door uh, this morning. We should see temperatures fall a couple more degrees over the next couple of, hour of an hours, but we'll bounce back up to around 12 degrees by 9 a.m. 24 your lunch hour will even hit the freezing mark by 3 p.m. before warming all the way up to around 37 West Lafayette later today. 40 degrees that will be your afternoon high in Crawfordsville will even hit 41 in Covington. So some portions of the viewing area reaching the 40s later today though the majority of us will be sitting pretty in the 30s. 38 in Logansport right around 34 degrees in Winnemac later today. So we see plenty of clear skies this morning but as we get towards the afternoon more of that upper level moisture passes in. We're talking about light upper level cloud cover so the sun still peeking through, so mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies throughout the afternoon before we clear out overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Now, as we get towards the evening hours, normally when you have clear skies overnight, temperatures plummet. But with an area of high pressure moving in and moving to the east nonetheless, winds will be moving in from the south, and that's going to help continue to keep temperatures a bit more stable during the overnight hours. We only drop back down to around 32 degrees overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. We become mostly clear during the evening hours. Stay clear for the beginning of your Friday. Maybe 
mainly clear skies as we kick off the last day of the work week. However, by the afternoon, still looking at a few light clouds, a possibility, but altogether still mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Expected once again, this time we'll be seeing gusty southwesterly winds throughout the day, helping to boost those temperatures up into the upper 40s, low 50s, and yes, some of us may be even seeing those mid 50s for tomorrow afternoon. Friday looks absolutely beautiful. 55 degrees in West Lafayette, 56 Crawfordsville, 52 in Fowler, a little bit further off to the north, still seeing the mid to upper 40s, 47 degrees in Rensselaer for tomorrow afternoon. Now we've been talking about the temperature roller coaster all morning. Normally when you're on a roller coaster, you get all the way up to the top and then the eventual drop happens and that is what heads our way for the end of the weekend. Check this out. 37 degrees Thursday, 55 on Friday, Saturday, right around 50 degrees. But sadly, Sunday and Monday, not looking so nice. 34 degrees. At least we see plenty of sunshine come Sunday. Same story for St. Paddy's Day. 37 degrees. Look at a little leprechaun on there kicking his leg. He's enjoying his day. Temperatures will be warming all the way back up to around 54 degrees by Thursday. Slight chance of passing showers that day and Wednesday. Well, Wednesday just looks beautiful. 62 degrees, your high temperature for the day. Partly cloudy skies expected that afternoon. Something to notice, except for that slight chance on Tuesday. We're dry pretty much all the way through. We are, you know. We're going to be having a couple passing low pressure systems, but it looks like that precipitation will elude us. Staying off to the southeast of us uh, with that low passing through the region come Sunday. Temperatures will be cooling off quite a bit come Sunday, but at least we'll be staying dry Saturday night into Sunday by the beginning of next week. Warming back up, but we do see that very slight chance of isolated rainfall. Looking forward to next week, that's for sure. Beautiful. Cameron, thank you for that. Coming up, reports say Chinese satellite images have captured debris of some kind off the coast of Vietnam. Officials are questioning whether it could be connected to the missing Malaysia Airlines plane. Furniture Row's warehouses are overstocked. That means great savings for you. Through March 13th, save 50% on this sofa group. And choose from any dining and bedroom groups that include a free HD TV. Plus get three years no interest. Furniture Row, home of Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. You probably thought it would never happen, but it always does. Finally, winter is closed. And suddenly, the world is open. When you get everything you need to freshen everything up at low Meyer prices, the possibilities are endless. The world's open. Come on in. Get your living room ready for the games at H.H. H. Gregg's 25% off sale. Save up to 25% on appliances, electronics, furniture, and more. Get a 40-inch LED TV, only $279. A Samsung 51-inch HD TV, $499. Save $800 when you buy a Whirlpool Cabrio washer-dryer pair. And save $1,000 on Samsung stainless steel kitchen packages. It's H.H. H. Gregg's 25% off sale going on now. See it all at hhgregg.com. The Cook Law Firm, working every day with injured people. I'm Aaron Cook. You've been injured in an accident. The last thing you need to be dealing with is a mailbox full of letters from out-of-town lawyers. I'm Jeff Cook. We know you are vulnerable when you're hurt. Call a law firm located right here in Lafayette, offering legal services since 1970 that you've counted on. Contact the Cook Law Firm. It's free to talk about your case. 423-5628. Furniture Row's warehouses are overstocked. That means great savings for you. Through March 13th, save 50% on this sofa group. And choose from any dining and bedroom groups that include a free HD TV. Plus get three years no interest. Furniture Row, home of Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. You're watching News 18 this morning. News from where you live. It's 6.15 on the clock right now, and the investigation continues this morning into the disappearance of a Malaysian Airlines Boeing jet. Susan McGinnis reveals what officials think happened before the plane lost contact with air traffic control. According to the Wall Street Journal, U.S. investigators say data from Flight 370 suggests the plane may have stayed in the air for about four hours after losing contact with air traffic control. The news comes as Vietnamese and Malaysian search crews once again scoured an area in the South China Sea but failed to find debris captured on Chinese satellite Sunday. The images showed three suspicious objects floating in the same area of the plane's last known location. Several nations are searching more than 
than 27,000 square nautical miles by land and air for any sign of the plane, including emergency signals from the Malaysia Airlines jet. If the pingers are operating normally, if they aren't buried in the seafloor mud, if they aren't you know, obscured by a lot of wreckage, mm -hmm. they should be heard. The Boeing 777 was en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing Saturday when it vanished. The more time that passes, the greater the variability that's possible due to the intervening time and the wave action, the wind, the current that would have moved the debris. Malaysia Airlines now says it's retiring the missing jet's flight code as a sign of respect for the 239 missing passengers and crew. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, Washington. In national headlines this morning, two people are dead and at least 23 are injured after a car struck a crowd early this morning at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas. Police say a drunk driver was trying to escape arrest when he drove into a barricaded area and hit pedestrians. The Austin police chief says the driver faces two counts of capital murder and 23 counts of aggravated assault with the vehicle. Crews are still searching for missing people after a fatal explosion sparked by a gas leak leveled two buildings. It happened yesterday in the East Harlem section of New York City. Several people are dead and more than 60 others are injured. The two five-story buildings housed a Spanish church, a piano repair shop, and residential apartments. Residents had complained recently about the unbearable smell of gas. Happening today, President Obama will announce plans to bypass Congress to secure overtime pay for millions of Americans. Managers and supervisors earning more than $455 a week have been exempt from overtime under the old rules. Under the new proposal, though, that threshold will be raised anywhere from $550 to $970 per week. The changes will likely take effect next year. And Jeopardy champ Arthur Chu's reign has finally come to an end. After 12 days winning in a row, Chu finished with $0 on Wednesday's edition of the syndicated quiz show. He had struggled for most of the, most of the show and risked, his, uh, risked and lost his entire day's bankroll, $6,400. On the question, he was the last male monarch who had not previously been Prince of Wales. That's a tough question. Diana Peliquin, the winning contestant on Wednesday, was the only one with the correct answer, which was George VI, in case you were curious. But don't feel too bad. Sadly for Chu, he's taking home almost $300,000 for his 12-day winning streak. $300,000, I'd say he was a winner right there. Well, coming up, new research suggests some demographics need to be aware of the dangers of high blood pressure. We'll tell you which group is largely going untreated. And still to come, why students at some West Lafayette schools will no longer have salt shakers in the lunchroom. Unclaimed freight notice this weekend at American Freight. Over 1,000 truckloads of living room furniture. Seven-piece living room groups that include a sofa, love seat, coffee table, two end tables, and two designer lamps. You get all seven pieces from only $398 complete. Free layaway till tax refund. Same-day delivery. Come to the Looney Docks this weekend only at American Freight in Lafayette, 3233 Teal Road, next to Pizza Hut, 474-2111. That's 474-2111. There's nothing stronger or more powerful than a dream. Dreams cannot be beaten, broken, or taken. Dreams fight, they persevere, they go on. Dreams will always prevail. Jimmy John's. Jimmy John! Huh? Jimmy John, freaky fast delivery. Grandpa, why can't you hear me? I know what it's like to struggle to hear in noisy environments. I'm Dr. Kelly Todd with Audio Diagnostics 2, and I invite you to learn more about hearing loss and how simple real solutions can be. Today's hearing aids are comfortable, affordable, and practically invisible. How do I know this? I wear one myself. Be in the hands of someone who knows firsthand what you're going through. Now is the time to act on your hearing loss. Call Dr. Kelly Todd at Audio Diagnostics today.
You're watching News 18 this morning. News from where you live. Well, all that snowfall continues to roll off to the east of us this morning here at home. We're clear, we're cool. Not exactly comfortable by any means, but at least this afternoon we'll be looking a bit nicer. As of right now, it is 12 degrees. Winds are from the west, three miles per hour. That wind chill currently in the single digits, feeling more like six stepping out the door this morning. So we had all the rain, the wintry mix yesterday morning with the snow on top of it. A lot of that melted yesterday afternoon with all the sunshine that we did see. A lot of that will be refreezing this morning, so please use caution, especially in sidewalks as well as parking lots over the next few hours. Temperatures will be warming up throughout the afternoon. We're looking at an afternoon high right around the mid to upper 30s throughout the viewing area. However, as of right now, it's 11 in Fowler, 17 in Crawfordsville, right around 12 in Kokomo, 14 degrees in Rensselaer, stepping out the door this morning. Cameron, thank you very much. There's a new warning about blood pressure for the Hispanic population, and some researchers suggest overnight hospital stays following surgery are not always necessary. Terry Okita explains in today's Health Watch. A new study finds hypertension is going untreated in the Hispanic community. Researchers from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute found many uninsured Hispanics are not aware of the prevalence and dangers of hypertension. Researchers are warning some diabetes drugs come with heart risks and that those risks are overlooked during clinical trials. Previous studies have prompted the FDA to now require researchers to look at heart risks when testing new glucose-lowering drugs. And it may not be necessary to stay overnight in the hospital when having joint replacement surgery. Researchers in Philadelphia found the outcomes are pretty much the same for people who had an outpatient procedure and those who stayed overnight. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Terry Okita for CBS News, Los Angeles. Health Watch on News 18 is brought to you by Franciscan St. Elizabeth Health. Franciscan Physician Network is one of the largest in the Midwest. Sisters, brothers, aunts, and uncles across Indiana have a long history with our family doctors, turning to them for their health and wellness, illness, or injury, or a referral to one of our many specialists, always trusting we'll get them back on their feet in no time. Franciscan Physician Network, inspiring health. Furniture Row's warehouses are overstocked. That means great savings for you. Through March 13th, save 50% on this sofa group. And choose from any dining and bedroom groups that include a free HD TV. Plus get three years no interest. Furniture Row, home of Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. <laughs> Let State Farm Agent Trent Johnson handle all the moving parts to your insurance. Whether it's for auto, home, life, or financial services, Trent Johnson is there with more ways to help and more ways to save. Call or visit Trent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Furniture Row's warehouses are overstocked. That means great savings for you. Through March 13th, save 50% on this sofa group. And choose from any dining and bedroom groups that include a free HD TV. Plus get three years no interest. Furniture Row, home of Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. Morning, noon, and night, seven days a week. You can count on getting your local forecast from Weather Team 18. We're on the job using the latest satellite information and weather station data to give you an accurate forecast. It's not just interpreting climate data, but looking at past weather patterns to make a forecast. Collecting the data, comparing computer models, accounting for atmosphere factors, it's all part of what we do. News 18, weather from where you live. You're watching News 18 this morning. News from where you live. Earlier this week, we told you about a family whose lives were forever changed by a rare disease. Purdue coach Matt Painter has now teamed up with the Smith family to raise awareness about the illness. And there's now a way that you can help. Julie and Brant Smith are our guests today, and they're here to tell us how. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Julie, we'll start with you. Let's hear about the disease. Neiman Pick Type C, a rare disease. Tell us really how it affects the body. Sure. It's a neuro, um, neurological degenerative disease. So um, a child is born kind of normal and makes those normal milestones. And then as the disease progresses, you kind of lose those um, 
neurological development. So it affects the brain. Some kids, each child is affected differently. Um, it's a storage disease and their body cannot process cholesterol. So kids start to stumble. They um, can't learn as well. And it just from there takes you know away a lot of their capabilities. Brant, tell us about the new uh, the new challenge that's now you guys have partnered up with Coach Painter to help raise money for this cause yet again. I know it's been uh, now the second year in a row that you guys have been in this challenge. Tell us about how exciting it is to, to kind of team together with Purdue in hope of, of getting a, a, a good amount of funding. Oh, it's really great because uh, last year I guess I uh, heard about the co contest right before it happened and it was kind of one of those things where I wasn't sure how we were going to do. A lot of voters for a lot of bigger fund like funds were happening and we ended up getting second place in our region. We didn't raise as much money as we wanted, so this year we're trying to raise and win the whole entire thing, which is $100,000. And Julie, tell us, so far you guys have made it pretty far. You're in second place right now behind Ohio State coach Thad Mata. But tell us what the funding would mean, really, for Neiman Pick Type C at this stage. Sure. Um, since it is a rare disease, funding is very limited. So any amount of money going towards a rare disease goes a long way. Right now we are funding um, a lab at Purdue in the chemistry department with um, David Thompson and he is working on a medication called cyclodextrin which is kind of the next hope for uh, kids with NPC. It um, can hopefully slow down the progression of the disease so any amount of money that we can send his way can just further that research. And tell us how people can go online and vote for Coach Painter and hopefully build awareness. Sure. It's uh, www.votematpainter.com and every vote counts and we have until Sunday at noon. Brandon and Julie Smith, thank you for being here this morning. We also have a link on our website. You can also go to WLFI.com and find the